If y'all need help, there's help available. Any material needs, you know, has to have been some reason that would lead you to come to an abortion clinic. Most people don't, in a flippant way or a light way, decide to take the life of a child. But if there's a legitimate reason, a need, please talk with us. A safe place, finances, whatever kind of care for the child, for the mom. But while you sit there, you got to know that God said he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And no one's more innocent than the babies that are cut apart in this place. And you can act like it's a clean, sanitary thing, but it's a bloody mess to cut a child up. And the latest studies show that a child has a beating heart, recorded beating heart by 16 days after conception. That's before a mom even realizes she's a mom. It's a sad thing to watch family members sit by as their family members are going to be killed. You know, I have two sons who are firemen. They'll risk their lives to save strangers, yet I see parents and grandparents sit by as their grandchildren or nieces or nephews are about ready to be killed. Can't understand that, especially in light of help being offered. And God's commandment still says that we shall not murder. It's no different today than it was when it was given. Why should a stranger have to tell you this? Your own conscience screams to you that what's right and wrong. We all know it's wrong to steal, to kill, to lie, because we don't want that being done against us. Yet how crazy it is that in this situation we feel that we're justified to do that to the most innocent. A baby that hasn't sinned at all against you. A baby that hasn't wronged you at all. And that is the one you choose to kill? It doesn't make sense. It's evidence of a hard and selfish heart. I want to encourage you to turn to God for mercy, to seek repentance, and that means to turn from your rebellion. And right now you're in a state of terrible rebellion against your Creator. You wouldn't be here in an abortion clinic to kill a little child, a, a image bearer of God. When you leave today, you're either going to leave having done what is right, and that's always leaving before you murder a child. Or with the blood of the child on your hands. You have to bear that guilt when you stand before God naked and trembling, and you will. There'll be no haughty attitude, no pride. No digging your heels in and saying, I'll do what I want to do when you stand before God, and you will. The Word of God says it's appointed to every man and woman. Everyone wants to die, and we all die, and most of us die sooner than we expect. And after that, just as sure as our death, is the judgment. When you will answer for all the things you've done, all the thoughts you've had, all the intents of your heart. And for the time you sat in a car at a killing center, and waited for a little baby to be chopped up. I'm telling you, I wouldn't want to be in your feet, on your shoes on that day. When God says, guilty, guilty over you. No lawyer will argue your case. The Bible says, though hand join in hand, though people come to an agreement and say, you know, we believe in our situation this is right. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. God offers mercy, but it always follows repentance. That's doing a 180. <coughs> Taking ownership of our rebellion, acknowledging that we are sinners, that we're living a life of hatred toward God, and begging for mercy. God's Word says today is the day of salvation. In other words, immediately when you hear the truth, listen to your conscience and do what is right. And even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, even if it's inconvenient, 
You should be doing everything in your power to save your grandchild. Regardless of the sin your daughter's been involved in, the immoral lifestyle, in your view, perhaps the shame she'll bring on your family. But there's no greater shame than to kill your own child and sit by and let it happen. There is help available. 